<sighs> oh, where were we? Um, episode 17, part two. Off we go then. Hi, I'm Rob. It's garage time. Welcome to the garage. It is episode 17, part two, right now. As you can see, the engine is out. The chassis is way up on the jack stands. Before I do anything else, I got to get in underneath here and uh, weld in on the bottom of the, the top tubes. I have to finish welding in the corner of the fillet tube. Uh, basically, the, the welds that I could not get at when, I, when the engine and transmission were in there. Okay, the next thing I got to do is cap off the end of the driver's footwell fillet tube. Ooh, boom. I'm an old man. <laughs> okay. Okay. Woohoo! Where's my wire brush? Is it over there? I don't know. Let's haul myself up out of here. Here's what we're gonna do. Um, I'm gonna draw a diagram of what my plan is for the bracing tubes in the overall firewall opening. Take a look over my shoulder here. As you can see here, I've drawn badly. Here's the firewall opening. The two vertical tubes that go to the, the chassis tubes, like so. Um, there's the upper firewall tube right there. Okay, there's the other chassis tube right there. Here is the driver's footwell, the driver's footwell fillet tube right here. Right there, which I have just capped the drive shaft tunnel right there. Um, there's the, the floor. There's the, there's that and that and that. <laughs> yeah. And so we have marks right here for the width of the drive shaft tunnel. And what we're going to do is put in a vertical tube that goes like so from the inside edge of the driver's footwell fillet tube that goes vertically from the driver's footwell fillet tube up to the firewall. That's, this is, that's our first thing we're gonna do, is put in this vertical tube. We're gonna measure 45 degrees from these two marks that come up from the outside of the drive shaft tube we're gonna measure 45 degree angle this way to that, and then again to this. And so we're gonna wind up with two tubes like this that will be at a 45 degree angle, two X, one there and one here. And then once we get this tube in, the other thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna put in a small horizontal piece to tie the end of this over into this tube right here for some extra beef. So the, that's the first tube. This will be the second. This will be the third. And this right here will be fourth. So I got four tubes to, four tubes to make. Let's go measure and then we'll cut some tubing. Um, actually, the first thing we're gonna do is rub some paint off of that. I don't know that you guys wanna see me rub paint off because that's always super exciting isn't it? Even though 
I do like to show you the boring stuff. This is a remnant that um, is from the piece that I used to cut the transmission top tubes. And it so happens that this piece is almost the exact right length to fit down in here. Put it in place. Hold it as straight as I can and then just simply mark it like so. And there we have the distance. Let's make sure that this is level. Okay, yep, there's that tube and that tube. Yeah, they look good. Alrighty then, let's let's tack that thing in there, shall we? There's that. Tack one up here. And away go the magnets. Bye bye. Damn. Well, the welder went from being my sworn enemy to being my friend. Yeah. It's making me look like, look at those, man, those look good. Those look real good. You ain't go, oops. Oops. <laughs> I'm gonna have to disconnect that brake line, aren't I? Cool. <laughs> Oh, I'm a knucklehead. <laughs> this is supposed to go outside of this tube. Yeah. Brilliant. Let's see. Going up. okay to me. That's going to be a giant pain in the ass to weld, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that's going to be a giant pain in the butt to weld. And there, and then there. I hate welding in sharp corners, but, you know, it's going to have to happen. Oh, okay. Okay, so um, I'm cutting the uh, two diagonal framing tubes for the firewall opening. This tube needs to be 9 and 13 16 inches long. Um, I've done a little bit of setup. I've already got my chop saw set to a 45 degree cut, and I've cut one corner already, so let's mark this one. 9 and 13 sixteenths, right there, 45 degrees, Is that, let's go chop this off, shall we? Yes. Okay, and now a test fit. Let's go do the same thing for the driver's side. There we go.
uh, they will go like this in this orientation. Let's go magnetize these things in place and fire up the welder. Okay. The drawer side. Yeah. Go. Yep, there's that. And that. Yeah, let's not shower my phone in debris. That looks pretty good. Yay. A little bit. A straight edge would be convenient at this juncture. Eh, oh, that edge isn't horrible. It's straight, straight enough. Yeah, there we go. And sometimes the tools present themselves. There we go. All right. We shall endeavor to not burn either ourselves or Cambot 8. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Hopefully, it'll go okay. Okay, well, I guess we're doing you first. Fire in the hole. You got me. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah. See this right here? This is a mistake. Yeah, brilliant. Wicked smart. There we go. <clears throat> I can't see that well, then I'm glad. <laughs> oh, it's not terrible. It's just terrible enough. There they are. The framing diagonals. Now we're going to put in the next, the number four tube right here. One, two, three, four. Then we can move on to the top tube diagonal braces. Um, now what I got to do is I got to put the top tube bracing in. There's going to be a tube that goes between the two top tubes, of course, and then another tube that will go from here to the bottom side of the tube. And that will brace the tubes to the floor and brace them side to side. And that whole thing, this whole business here, um, the transmission tunnel tubes and the drive shaft tunnel tubes coming out to the firewall um, helps to stiffen the chassis through the middle. It adds some torsional rigidity to this whole area. I gotta make a couple of marks on the whoops let's go make a couple of marks on the tubes the top tubes because i want the bracing tubes to be in line with the with this tube right here because this tube right here is in line with that tube those tubes down there those tubes right there you can see where it's capped off this tube used to be just a one-piece tube. When I initially built it, all these tubes, this right here was a one-piece tube, right here was a one-piece tube, that was always intended to get cut out at the 
you know, cut out after the rest of the structure was built and the chassis was sufficiently stiff that I could cut these out to make room for the transmission. So to jostle the camera, because that's a thing I can do. And we take this guy right here and we put it on the put it on the marks that I made, the mark on the driver's side and the mark on the passenger side. And then there we go. Make sure we get them good. There. Okay, we have two welding magnets in there. We love those things, don't we? And then there's our piece of tubing that is going to get trimmed to fit in between those two tubes. Let's crawl underneath and mark that thing. The pen goes up and does this. And my calibrated eyeball says that both of those cuts are going to be eight degrees. And here is my piece. And look at that, will ya? Bloody perfect. Man, oh, Manischewitz. These awkward welding positions are awkward. Uh, so what we're doing right now is adding in the, the last two tubes that are needed for the transmission tunnel. Those are going right here from this little tube junction here up to this junction here to make a trapezoid, an open trapezoid from here to the transmission tunnel top tube the cross tube, and then down the other side to the same little pad at the tube junction on the other side. I've got a fabrication hack that I think works pretty good. And uh, unlike, the, unlike the way I extend tubes that I've cut too short, um, this one you can absolutely do at home. Um, although your results may vary, what can I say? So uh, let me uh, get a camera in there and I'll show you exactly how this works. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a, a template out of welding rod. So we got a piece of 3 to 30 second welding rod and a pair of pliers. And so what we're going to do is take the welding rod and bend it until we have an angle at the bottom, which coincides with the angle that we want. What I want is this. that right there and so now we know we can cut it right about there take our cutters hit myself on the head All right take our little template we've got an angle right there which looks about right I'm going to come down here hello everyone then we will like so and then we know that this is going to bend right there. So we will take the pliers and then bend it to what looks to be an equivalent angle. Then we bring it down and we 
find that it is very close. That looks pretty good. I think we've got our template. I've got my I've got my wire my welding wire template here and I'm not going to measure the angles on the wire itself. So what I want to do is I'm going to take one of my yikes, one of my big straight edges here. I'm going to draw a straight line on my poster board, like so. There we go. Just that. And then I'm going to take my, draw a line here, draw a line here. And now, let's measure those lines. We like this one because this one has sixteenths of an inch. So, and what we find is that the overall length of this thing, 13 and 1 sixteenths, 13.063. That's the overall length. Okay, so the bottom angle is 73 and a half, uh, 73 degrees, this 80 degrees, and then the overall length is 13 and 1 16th. Okay, so there's that. Let's uh, go get some raw materials and measure some stuff out. But before we do that, let's take a closer look at the sketch of the part and go over a couple of details. I'm gonna zoom in and get a better look at the sketch. Good, more of my freehand orthogonal views. This part has a simple angle where it meets the floor and a compound angle where it meets the trans tunnel top tube. From my measurements in part one, I already know that the top tube angles up at 20 degrees. The wire template was used to find the second angle, how much the tube tilts inward from the floor up to the top tube, which measured at 73 degrees. Um, okay, back to the action. Uh, does this mean more of the boring stuff, you know, measuring and marking and cutting? <laughs> Doesn't that just suck? It needs to be cut a little bit more. That angle looks good. This angle, not so much. Almost there. File to fit is happening now. Okay. Damn it. No, it's not even, not even close. Well, gonna have to do it again. 
Remember when I said that sometimes you just have to throw that piece away and cut another one? Yeah. <laughs> Let's see if this one came out all right. Oh, yeah. Much, much more better. -er. It's a little long. Go give it a massage on the belt sander. And then um, be very careful about how much I massage off of it. So that I don't have to do this a third time. <laughs> much better. It's time to climb. Up we go. Three hours worth of work right there, that one tube. Well, that was fun. The driver's side transmission tunnel side bracing tube is welded in fully. And um, now I'm going to move on to creating the tube for the passenger side. And one thing I want to try to do is not take three hours to make that one part. Um, as you saw, I had to do a lot of file to fit, even though I didn't show you all of the boring stuff. Um, the struggle was very real. So let's see if we can take the second tube and um, be a little more efficient in its fabrication. Here I come, ready or not, whoa. There we go. Take a peek at that with the, yeah, it looks good. That looks real good. Also good, also real good. Yeah, looks good. I am well pleased with these welds. Boop, okay. So here's our passenger side tube. And one thing I found, we did all that measuring and it was 103 degrees that way and 78 degrees this way. Um, the 78 degrees turns out to be a pretty, pretty good measurement, but the 103 degrees turns out to be rubbish, as they say. What we want is a more accurate representation of what I will need to cut and shape. Here's that. Okay, so that's at a right angle. And it's okay. So now what we will do is mark it like so. Remember when I said I like showing you guys the boring stuff? <laughs> There's that, and we go like so. No. That's good. Building a car like this is a whole lot of learn by doing. I mean, I built one, I built a three-wheeler, which is a whole story in and of itself. Um, and so all the stuff that I learned of building that, I'm applying to this. And I've been engaged in this build since 2018. And I'm still learning. Every time you go to do something, you, you're still learning how to do things. It's, you know, like for instance, this, I tried, you know, I've, I've done that welding wire template thing before. Um, in fact, that's how I made the, that's what I used to uh, cut the angles on the, the cycle fender struts on the three-wheeler, and it worked really great for that. Um, difference being, those weren't compound angles. And so what got me on this one was the fact that I'm trying to cut a compound angle, and I didn't, the wire wasn't quite accurate enough. Um, so hopefully this will be, uh, hopefully this will go a little more smoothly with marking the tube this way. As long as I remember to cut the tube 
on the correct line. <laughs> Since on this one I have to cut it on the outside of the line and on this one I have to cut it on the inside of the line. Which should work out okay. Um, so let's go uh, do some more measuring and some more marking and then cut this tube and see what it looks like. Or at least see how it fits. And with any luck I'll only have to do this one once. Going up. We that's always fun, isn't it? Hello. <laughs> All righty then. Let's get the magnets out of the way for a moment. And then <laughs> Wow. Look at that. I've done it. I got it in one cut. Can you believe it? Barely. Yeah. I need a... Yeah, that's... Yeah. That looks good. Yeah, let's go fire up the welder, shall we? Uh, yep, that looks A-OK. -okay. A-OK -okay for me. Yeah, I pronounced the, uh, that tube Weld it in. I think we're done. Well, <laughs> that was fun. Um, so the transmission tunnel is complete. And uh, I think we can move on to sorting out the driver controls. First thing I'm gonna have to do is put the engine and transmission back in. And then uh, we can uh, install that Jaguar XJ6 throttle pedal assembly. And then we can put the shifter assembly in there and connect the cable to the shift lever on the transmission. And uh, then I'm not sure what I'm going to do after that. I, you know, I'm, I don't know. There's so much to do. Just pick, pick a thing. There's still a lot to do, so pick a thing. But at any rate, transmission tunnel is done. It's solid. And um, I hope you've enjoyed uh, following me along with this. Um, as always, uh, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And I'll see you around the channel. Going up. One, two, one, two, three, cuatro. Well, my daddy, he raised stock car a long, long time ago at New England's fastest quarter mile. Messing around with cars.